Hey guys, welcome back for issues two and three of Green Lantern vs. Aliens. In our last episode, we saw Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern of Earth's sector, as he dealt with his first encounter with the Xenomorph. During the 10 years that has passed since the last comic, much has happened to the Green Lantern Corps. After Coast City, Hal's hometown is annihilated by Cyborg Superman and Mongol, he attempts to recreate the entire city and everyone in it as a construct. The Guardians see this as a complete misuse of power and they order him to stop what he's doing. Hal, now driven insane, takes his fight to the Green Lantern Corps and the Guardians themselves. He's able to either kill or defeat and take the power ring from all of the Green Lanterns that oppose him, even going so far as to kill off the mighty Kilowog. Next he kills off all of the Guardians, or so he thinks he does, as he enters the Green Lantern power battery, absorbing its power, eventually emerging as the evil Parallax. Ganthet, a Guardian who's still alive, takes the last Green Lantern ring and gives it to Kyle Rayner, who for a time would be the only Green Lantern. And this is where we pick back up with issue number two with a separate alien invasion. Okay, so this really isn't an alien invasion. It's actually a comic book being drawn inside a comic book. And it's done by the artist, Kyle Rayner, the last Green Lantern. He's working on a new issue in his apartment when he's suddenly surprised by Tomar Dar. The two make their way into the living room where they find more ex-members of the Green Lantern Corps. Everyone in this room were either members of the Corps or they were going to be until Parallax came along. The team mentions that they track the activity of Kyle's ring in order to find him, and that they've come for his help. It turns out that they know of the spaceship that crash landed on Mogo, and Mogo is now home to an alien infestation that some of them, along with Hal, placed there for safekeeping. Unfortunately, they know this vessel's going to come into contact with the aliens, and the team sees it as their responsibility to clean this mess up. Yet without their powers as members of the Green Lantern Corps, they're going to need Kyle's help. Luckily for them, he decides to join and help the team. After arriving on the planet, they quickly find the crashed vessel and begin searching for survivors. Kyle tells the rest of the team to hang back since he's the only one with a power ring when Salak, an ex-Lantern, tells him that even though he lacks a ring, he still took an oath to protect, and that oath is still active. Even sarcastically noting that Kyle doesn't have an oath. This clearly pisses Kyle off, and he responds by saying, hey, this ring chose me, I didn't choose the ring, to which Salak says, and perhaps that was a mistake. Kyle tells him he had nothing to do with them losing their power rings, and that they were the ones who created this mess in the first place, so just stay out of his way, which is answered with, fair enough, yet not from Salak, instead it comes from an unknown survivor of the ship. Her name is Crow, and she is the first officer of this vessel. After having engine problems, they were forced to set down on Mogo. Of their crew of 38, they managed to only have a few casualties during the crash landing, that is, until the aliens came. She tells Kyle that the entire crew was carried off by the creatures and that for some reason they ignored her. Kyle tells her that they are somewhat responsible for this situation, so they join her in the search for the survivors. They eventually come to a large hole in the ground that has some kind of organic resin growing around the edges and walls of it. As they peer down into the abyss, Kyle asks how deep it goes when suddenly some kind of liquid drops down in between them. To which Crow yells out, THEY'RE HERE! Out of nowhere the team is already surrounded by full grown xenomorph aliens. Crow screams out, MOVE! and starts to gun down the attacking alien horde. Kyle throws up a defensive shield, stunned by the sheer ferocity of these attackers. He does his best to try to keep the non-powered team members safe, but the aliens are just way too fast and they keep trying to carry people away. Just then Tomar is grabbed by an alien as it jumps down into the hole. Kyle reaches over the edge to help him when not only is he not able to grab Tomar, but his ring slips off and falls into the dark. And this is where issue number two ends, but we're gonna go right into issue number three. We pick up the story again with Kyle, Salak, and Crow staring into that hellish pit from which the aliens came. Kyle knows that they're pretty much dead without the power ring, so he tries to call it to him, yet he's unsuccessful noting that the ring is either stuck or he's running low on willpower. Crow explains to Kyle that nothing here has changed, that she still has a duty to save her crew, and he still has a duty to save his friends. You're the hero, Kyle, so deal with it. After he explains to her that they are out of luck and unarmed, she hands him a gun. Kyle states that he's not a lethal weapon sort of guy and that he's never even touched a real gun. 
She quickly shows him the basics of how to use the firearm and they start to rappel down the hole from which the aliens came. Once near the bottom of the pit, they find a group of people, presumed dead, webbed up in the alien resin, yet none of them are from Crow's crew or the team with Kyle. Just then, one of the bodies that were thought to be dead comes to life and grabs Kyle by the shoulder, saying, help me. Suddenly, an egg-like leathery sack on the floor starts to open and a spider-like creature begins to crawl out. Crow blasts the alien and then goes to kill the survivor when Kyle jumps in. Just what the hell are you doing? You can't kill him. He's already dead, she exclaims, and he's got one of those things inside him. Just then, Salak sees that they aren't alone. Aliens spring out of the darkness. The team unloads on them, yet Kyle is frozen until the last second when he is forced to pull the trigger to kill an alien as it leaps for him. Salak is overrun and he yells out, Make sure the tradition doesn't die with you, Kyle, and whatever you do, see that this doesn't happen again. Kyle does what he can to reach for Salak when an alien confronts him, about to unleash its inner jaw on him. Thinking quickly, Crow jams her handgun into the mouth of the alien and fires, blowing the back of its head off and saving Kyle in the process. Some of the acid spray from the alien hits Crow in the abdomen, but she doesn't say anything and pushes Kyle into a narrow crevice that the aliens can't fit into. Once they make their way through the tunnel, it empties out into the alien's lair. Here we find the survivors along with the matriarch of the aliens, the queen, along with a full room of eggs and more on the way. And you guessed it, on the floor next to these eggs is Kyle's ring. And that's it for issues two and three of Green Lantern vs. Aliens. Next time we'll finish up the story with issue number four. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And as always, I'd like to thank you for all of your support for the channel. Take care everyone, and I hope to see you next time.